This is the Straight Up Breakdown Podcast. Exclusively on the Herd App Media Network. Tell it to me straight up. Hello and welcome into the Straight Up Breakdown Podcast, proudly part of the Hill Varsity Network. I am Greg Smith. Your It's a bye week, so I'm not exactly sure what to do with this little bit of extra time that I have, friend. Uh, today, I am joined by the founder of the Warren Academy and former Husker great Steve Warren. Uh, Steve, thank you for being on the show, man. How are you today? Oh, man, I'm good. I'm good. Just It's a Monday, so I'm trying to get my Mondays out <laughs> and trying to get going. You know how that is. Yeah, absolutely. It's funny. Monday is it's weird. I've actually talked about this on the show before. Mondays are usually one of my best days. It's Wednesday. When we hit the middle of the week, that's where I start to hit that lull. Um, and we got problems. Like today I was up, but my alarm went off at 4 30. I, I rolled out of bed. We were good to go. Got my workout. Um, so we'll, but we'll see where we are on Wednesday. My Monday always just seems like chaos. Like Monday is just, it, it's a controlled chaos, but it's right. still like chaos. And then there's always something on Monday that pops up that I'm not ready for. My daughter called me today and she's in college and a freshman. So, you know, she don't know how to do nothing. Right. So, <laughs> She called me messing with her phone and I'm trying to get work done. And Mondays are always the worst for me. About Wednesday, I'm probably in full stride right there. Okay. Wednesday is where I feel the best. Okay, you start to ramp it up over the course. See, yeah. I burn hot and then I take that, I take that dip. And then we get to Friday and I'm feeling pretty good again. And then we really just about to start the cycle all over again, especially when it's a game week. Um, because of how much goes on for me Friday night covering a high school game and then Saturday covering the Nebraska game. Like, it gets hectic in a hurry over the weekend. See, by Friday at about 12 o'clock, I'm usually on – that's usually about the start of my happy hour, and I start <laughs> trying to check out who's playing tonight, and I'm good to go. So, yeah. Wednesday, Wednesday, late Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I'm, I'm, I'm primed. I'm ready to go. But then about Friday, about 12 o'clock, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on the low end. Yeah, we need to be somewhere in the middle on that. We'd had a perfect setup. And we Absolutely. put this team together. Um, now, each week we have a couple of segments that are mainstays of the show. Uh, the first one is called Coach Speak, where we go over something that a coach, player, or talking head said, and then we give you guys a straight up breakdown of what they meant. Coach Speak to Real Talk. Now, this week comes courtesy of uh, Browns quarterback Baker Mayfield, who had mm-hmm. this to say after the Browns' 41 to 16 route over the Bengals about Odell Beckham Jr., who basically forced his way out uh, of the Brown situation um, and re- was released, actually on his birthday, uh, was released. Uh, Mayfield had this to say about Odell. He said, quote, I wish him well. I really do. My feelings haven't changed. Uh, from a personal standpoint, he's a good friend of mine, but I'm worried about the guys in our locker room. I'm proud of these guys, how they were able to focus despite all the stuff that was going on this week and about they were continue to able to do their job. We're going to see if we can build on it and continue to get better. Let's break that down. Steve, what does that mean? Basically, it means I'm I'm past all this. Like, I've moved on. Like, me and dude, we all right. When I see him in the streets, we're going to say what's up. We're going to be cordial. <laughs> yeah. But that's not really my homie. It's just somebody I played ball with. And, you know, we had to deal with all the mess and the drama. So we're just trying to move past this and see if we can win some games and get back in the playoff. Yeah, and it's real. It's interesting though too because it's funny you say it like that because I mean you have work friends all the time. Like it yeah. happens. It happens on teams. We know that. Um, and so it, it goes that way. We're like, hey, I, we get along, get along when it comes to us trying to get this common goal. In this case, win some games. Yeah. Once that starts to go sideways, hey, you know, I'm not gonna hold any grudges and it's not gonna be beef when we see each other. Um, but yeah. at the same time, like, I'm not going to be sitting around pining over him, m- missing him and talking about we need him back either. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it wasn't like it wasn't like Baker was using him in the first place. That's the whole right, problem. Right, that was part of the problem. Right? <laughs> that was part of the problem anyway. So Baker's probably like, you know what, I'm glad he's gone because now I don't have to answer the questions of why he's not involved in the offense. And I can do my job and everybody else can do their job without the distraction. To, o- to Odell's standpoint, though, like, you know, he has been – a dude that's been kind of a distraction in the past few area places, you know, the past places he's been. And he really wasn't that. I actually thought he handled it pretty well, to tell you the truth. He wasn't, from what I saw, all the reactions, it wasn't like he was, like, yelling at Baker on the sideline or being boisterous in the huddle. It looked like he was just going to the huddle, going to the sideline. He looked kind of checked out. Right. But I don't think that he handled it bad, to tell you the truth. 
Yeah, and that's what I thought too, because you know, when I first kind of even heard about the situation, I was like, oh, we must be back on the giant stuff. Remember what back then we were kicking the net and like oh, yeah. throwing fits on the sidelines and all of that. He was doing a lot. Yeah, he, he was, was doing the absolute most. So I was like, okay, well, maybe that's maybe that's what has been going on. You kind of check out the situation. I'm like, okay, that wasn't actually it. He was kind of quietly going about it and doing the things that people mm-hmm. always say they want guys to do when yeah. they are unhappy in the situation. Um, and then kind of everything kind of broke. And I think it really broke a little bit it, in part, not his fault, part kind of uh, when his dad put out that yeah, video yeah. Of, of all of the cut ups <laughs> of him being open. And I'm still yeah, trying to figure out, like, I want to know who sent that to him. Cause obviously his dad didn't, you know, get final cut pro <laughs> out and start making all of these clips. Um, yeah. then, like, so that situation, you can't have that. Uh, but it was a very 2021 thing to have happen to somebody's dad um, of an NFL player putting stuff out like that on social media. Then you got LeBron James talking about free OBJ and all of this stuff. Yeah, so like, it, yeah, it just blew up so much that the Browns had to do something. But I want to know, there has to be something else there, right? Like um, from the other end of this, the Browns then took all of that and said, okay, you got to go home for a little bit before they ended up cutting him. And so I just wonder if there's something else that's going to come out about um, the whole situation. There, there's definitely more to it because it was like, you know, Pops got online and was like, hey, you know, they ain't doing my son right. Get him the ball. <laughs> and then all of a sudden they having the, 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 the one-on-one meeting with who I don't think was the GM maybe. Yeah. And then next thing you know, it was like, well, we, we let him go home today. So he must have really snapped off in that meeting is what I feel yeah. like. And they was like, okay, this ain't. It's, it's, it's probably too far gone now, so let's try to figure out. I don't know why they didn't trade him, to tell you the truth. Yeah, and I think part of it might was was the money that he was owed because that was the whole thing with the Bob Miller situation where there was only so many teams that were going to be able to do it um, be because great. of his cap hit. And so Odell is kind of is in a more similar situation to that. But I still think you got to try to do something because obviously the Broncos figured it out. They were pay, they're paying the majority of Bob Miller's salary um to go ahead and leave and to get him to a contender and so the Browns could have done something like that but on the other hand you know Von Miller has some more goodwill built up in Denver versus Odell you know kind of forcing his way out I don't want to say doing it loudly I think saying doing it loudly is doing a disservice to him because I don't think it was totally like that um but he but people definitely knew he was unhappy like that was the situation um, but I do think I'm always in the mind that you want to get something for those guys. You don't want to just let people go and get nothing because somebody's going to pick him up and he's going to be productive somewhere. Yeah, I mean, I I would have tried to at least get a bucket of chicken or something for him instead of just letting him hit the road. But I mean, it is what it is. I think I think they're both better off. I mean, because you don't want you know they're 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 in a good part of the season where they still got a lot of games they can win, right? And still get there, and he's. He's at a place where now he can pick where he wants to be. So it, it might end up being a win-win for both of them. Yeah, absolutely. And that would be something to definitely keep an eye on because wherever he goes next, let him score three touchdowns in that first game. Uh, he yeah. could be dancing all over the end zone. Uh, but I'll be watching because uh, I, I like yeah, the entertains. So we we'll definitely see. Um, now, switching gears a little bit, one of the things that – and we, Steve, you and I were talking about this a little bit before you came on – is that Nebraska football and kind of where they are at this point. Um, I don't need to rehash it all for all of y'all. They were in the middle of a four-game losing streak. They lost again this weekend to Ohio State Mm -hmm. in a game that was – how the game went was a mild surprise, I would say, because based on how the Ohio State games have previously gone in recent years, uh, Nebraska did a great job, especially defensively, of holding them down. They were the number one scoring team in the country. Nebraska held them way below um, their season totals in a number of categories, uh, specifically points and rushing with Trayvon Henderson. Um, But they came up short again, and and it's a bottom line business, so we have to talk about this because as the losses continue to mount, we are in a position, like I, I, like I said to you pre-pod, where people have drawn their lines in the sand. Because, of course, the, the large conversation right now is the big picture part of it on what does Trev Alberts do? Should he keep Scott Frost? Should he fire Scott Frost? Um, there's little nuances in there. Do you, you know, blow out assistance, all of that. But it does feel like that the result of this game this weekend, to me, didn't matter all that much for whether or not you drew a line and what side of the line of the same you were on on that. 
because either it reinforced what you thought because they played another top team close or it reinforced what you thought because they lost again. <laughs> like, where do you kind of come down just on that broad general topic? And then we'll kind of dive in from there. <laughs> I mean, for me, it was it was watching the game and I actually had my sideline pass this past game. So I was on the sideline. Okay. And to start the game, the crazy part for me was I was at the Michigan game too. Yep. Um, same type of deal. I was on the sideline before the game. And um, the Michigan game, going back to Michigan, you could feel like a positive energy in the air, right? Like, it Oh, just yeah, kind of, yeah, I could feel that, yeah. You, you could feel like it was like it felt different being down there. The Ohio State game being down on the sideline, it was almost like there was no energy at all. Like it was like it was like the you could kind of feel like everybody was in the stands like, man, I hope we don't get blown out. Right. Like, I hope it wasn't like I hope we like we're going to win it. It was like really like I hope we don't get rolled. Like, I hope this doesn't go bad right. is what I felt like the energy was like on the sideline. But then to the team's credit, I felt like they started a lot better, even though, you know, offensively we didn't score a lot of points, but I felt like they battled from, from the first snap on. I felt like they made some things happen on both sides of the ball. Offense drove down and, you know, almost, almost uh, should have had points. We'll talk about that a little bit more, but <laughs> I felt like they, they started, I felt like they started better, but to go back to, um, you know, what side of the line you're on, uh, you know, I feel like it's, it's, it's wavering. You know what I mean? I feel like it's teetering every day. And some people are like, all right, we gotta we gotta give him more time, and some people are like, "Nah, he he's had enough. It's time to go." Um, and then there's just that part that's in the middle that's just like, "I don't really care no more. Like it's been too long, and this is just a joke." Um, and you hear that more and more every day now. Yeah, you definitely do, which I think has to be a factor in the conversation because if you're Trev Alberts, you don't you can't have the one thing you could not have. You can have people arguing back and forth on can, should he stay or not. That middle section of people that are just out no matter what yeah, um, and, and that are just frustrated with the program, yeah, that's growing. And that's a problem that I don't think enough people are talking about. And I think that that's something that will need to be addressed um, moving forward because those people, to be honest, are going to need to be won over regardless of what happens, right? It doesn't matter <laughs> to those people what happens. Yeah. They're just out and they found something else to do with their time. Like it, it is been surprising to yeah. me the amount of people I've had this season say especially was it it was last week the Purdue game where yeah. it was really nice out right it was like 65 degrees the amount of people that texted me and are like hey man I went and played golf or you know I was able to get that stuff yeah. in the yard done or whatever like that sort of stuff that when I first started covering this team like oh, you could never never, get, yeah. you never had people doing that and I've been here since like covering the team since the last year of Bo, I believe it was was the first was my first year kind of on the beat. Um, and so I've seen a lot. <laughs> I've seen a lot of ups and downs, but I've never really seen this where so many people are willing to say that they're doing something else with their time. Um, and I, I think that that has got to be a concerning thing uh, overall. I got a brother-in-law that's, I mean, he's big, big, huge. Huge Nebraska fan, and I texted him this weekend and said, "Hey, you are you are you going to be at the game? I'll be down there. We can get the kids together." And he's like, "Man, no, I'm." He's like, "I actually let my season tickets go," which I didn't know. He let his season tickets go, and he said one thing. He said to me was like, "I'm going to find something better to do with my time." And I never thought I'd hear this dude say that. I mean, like he is everything Nebraska. Like he is baseball, basketball. Yeah, like he's all about. Nebraska. And when he got to football, he was like, man, I let my season tickets go. Um, I'm going to find something else to do with my time. And that was shocking to me because I didn't ever think I'd hear that coming out of his mouth. But like you said, it's a lot more people. The Purdue game, actually, I had taped the first part of the game. I was running errands. So I was like, I'm going to stop at the car wash. Car wash was packed. Like, that would never right. happen. Right? <laughs> like, people was out washing their cars and hanging out, like, in the game. I mean, we right at kickoff. And, you know, before, it would be a ghost town, but not no more. It's, it's funny, too, that you say that, because um, that was another thing that happened this weekend. So uh, my wife had a tailgate for her work that they were doing. She works at the university, so she would, they were doing a tailgate at the College of Business. Um, and so before the game, 
they didn't have, she texted me, she's like, man, we just don't have that many people here. Like, I wonder what the attendance is going to be like. So then we're down pregame on the sideline. I'm looking around. I'm like, there's not as many people um, as normally here. That attendance is dropping steadily. Even that announced yeah. attendance that is a little inflated, like even that number has continued to go down over time. But she also noted to me that when she was coming back home, she was like, that was the most packed I've ever seen the streets like during a Nebraska game where people are just out here. So then by the time I got home from the game, this hours, I didn't think, I don't think I got home from that game. until probably six 6, 6, 6 30. And it yeah. was at that point, the streets were empty. And she was like, yeah, cause everybody did all that stuff earlier. They were like, you know, everybody yeah, was, was already out. It was the night before the game. I was, I actually stayed in Lincoln. So the night before the game, I was at Misty's and it was about six o'clock. And I was like, man, Misty's is kind of dead. Right. And it was, you know, that's this is a this is a Friday night before Ohio State. Right. And then years ago, Tuesday night came on a big game and people started coming in town. Yeah. You started to and, see like people parking in the tailgate lot. So yeah. you can see it start to fill up. Yeah. People getting set up Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. They're getting ready. People coming in town. It's like almost like a vacation for a big game. But now you know, it was a Friday night downtown in Lincoln, and it was kind of dead till about 6.30, 7 o'clock, which was shocking to me because I was expecting to, you know, go out and have a drink or two and hang out and have, have, some, have some good food at Misty's and think I was going to be in line. And we walked right up to Misty's at like 6 o'clock and got right in the seat. And that's, that's crazy. Um, that's crazy. So it, it's definitely and, – and it's not all – it's not all this, this – this staff's fault, right? This is no, it's a key, it's, it's an accumulation of stuff. stuff. I don't want yeah. anybody to think we sitting here talking about this is Scott and them doing this to the program. Right. Now, this is a cumulative effort of years and years of people just seeing the same stuff and hoping it's going to get somewhere that is not where it is yet. And that's why I actually think, to be honest, that's what we're part of the we're close and can get over the hump mentality kind of comes from. Yeah. Is because people are so nervous to then they're nervous to go all in on what's yeah. happening regardless. Right. But they also, I think seeing a little bit of, okay, at least on the scoreboard, if we don't really start peeling back layers and deep diving, like if we just look at the scoreboard, yeah, we can actually see a lot of these games are one score right. games. If it's, if, if a little tweak here or there, and there are some ones that are glaring, if we just pick special teams and say, if Nebraska had, average special teams they would have a better record than what they have right now right and that's you didn't have to go into offensive line pass rush all of that stuff just special teams right and so i think because people can see that that makes them likely to say okay well maybe more time is needed but then on the other side though (laughs) you get people that say well wait a second why should it take four years for you to figure out the special teams is, needs to be addressed. That's been happening, you know, since year one, since 2018. Yeah. And so it had just become this whole back and forth circle talk that ends up, it, it really doesn't have a great solution at the moment. And then yeah. on top of all of that, nobody knows, well, I don't want to say nobody because Trev knows, he knows, and he's really the only one that knows what it is that he's actually evaluating the program on right now. Yeah, what is he looking? What is he looking for? Right. right? What is because what he's what looking for and what the rest of us are looking for could be totally different. And, and and there's a lot that goes on inside of a program that happens before Saturday. Right. That you have to evaluate. Right. There's there's the whole week leading up to the game that has to be a part of the evaluation. It's the preparation. It's the culture. It's how the kids are are are, are, are behaving um, around the facility. What the mood is around the facility. It's the administration. There's so much that goes into the evaluation of just. It's not as simple as just replacing a head coach, right? Because you replace the head coach, right? You're cutting off the head, right, of everything. But right. so everybody that comes along with that. Now you're looking at, hey, what happens with the weight room staff? Right. right, the nutrition folks who, the by all accounts, folks. everybody loves them, right? <laughs> like it's so. There's a whole lot of folks that go along with that job that that their jobs are are up for grabs too. When you remove the head coach, because the head coach gonna come in and say, "I want my people, right? right. I want the people I've worked with or people I have a relationship with that think like I think and move like I move, so I know that I that I have people I can trust and I can be comfortable doing this job." So. There's a lot that goes into that evaluation process and, and a lot of decisions to make. And um, 
I don't want to be, I wouldn't want to be Trev, I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> no. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be him. Um, I wouldn't want to be him. I wouldn't want to have to make this decision in, in year one. Um, no, he, I think that's the thing. I don't think you would have. I, I has to be something that entered his mind when he took this job. It had to be a thought that, listen, absolutely. I'm not going to have to do this in year one. Like, we're not going to yeah. have to make a decision one way or the other in the very first year. Because, hey, nobody wants to do that. Like, and just think about the, the type of, like, how big the athletic director job is at Nebraska and how important that is and how many facets of that there are. You don't want to have to replace the most high-profile coach on campus. Like, you just don't want to have to do that. Um, and so, yeah, so I definitely don't envy his position on that. Um, the only thing, though, to me, and I mean, not the only thing, but the biggest thing to me that really helps Trev in this situation is this is not a Steve Peterson, Sean Icor situation in that it's an outside person that has to come in and kind of make that decision, right? So I don't think that he's going, he would get the same backlash one way or the other on what his decision ultimately ends up being because nobody's going to question that he has the best interests of the program at heart or that he's not a yeah. Nebraska guy or all of that stuff. So that will give him some leeway there. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a tough decision to make, but I mean, that's why you get paid the big bucks to do the job, right? <laughs> so right. the decision that has to be made, and this is the thing. He's not going to make a hundred percent of the people happy, regardless of what he does. No, based yeah, based on what we decided, we talked about. No, <laughs> and it's going to be a, a whole other side is going to be happy. So it's not it's not just going to be like a small group that's happy either way. Um, it's going to be it's going to be numbers and numbers and large groups happy or mad either way it goes. Yeah, and you're gonna have to and and because you know it's the time that we live in, like people have such so it's such an outlet in variety of ways to get that message out there, whatever they think. Um, you're going to hear from those people, right? Like either way, um, you're going to hear from them regardless of what you decide if you're Trev. So that's why it makes it even more important for you to just make the decision that, that Trev thinks is right. What, yeah. Like he can't be influenced by as much as he can uh, of everything else going on and what other people think, no matter who that is. Because at the end of this, like this, be, this decision honestly begins and it sucks for him that it's not even a full year in, right? Um, yeah. even six months that this Honestly, decision right that this decision starts kind of the beginning of how people will view his tenure and that's it's, tough it's, <laughs> it's, it's the it's the decision that's going to be we we made the right hire with Trev or it's going to be the decision that's like oh he don't know what he's doing right, right. Like, he's going to be one way or the other so man prayers up <laughs> yeah, <laughs> as we, I mean, that's really, I mean, it's tough. Like, it, it is just difficult. But he's gonna have, and it's really with with the bye week. I think you do another deep dive evaluation of what's happening. I know they meet uh, Travis Scott every Sunday, um, and so I'm, I'm sure they're having conversations. Um, and, and that communication is ongoing. But that that's gonna be a tough one. And obviously, we'll continue to kind of monitor it and bring you all the latest of what's happening with that as, as anything comes out. Um, but every week we end the show with a segment that we like to call Put Them On Blast, where we basically put someone on blast for something that they did or said. Put them on blast. Um, I'm going to let Steve go first this week. So, Steve, who are you putting on blast? <laughs> you know what? I'm going to put we, – we've been talking about it, but I, I'm going to put the fan base on blast, to tell you uh -oh. the truth, the Nebraska fan base, just because it is to the point right now where they've got to – temper expectations a little bit, right? Because they have to understand as a fan base, like the media is reporting all this stuff and coaches, potential coaches, if Scott's got to make changes to the staff or Trev's got to make a change in whole, are looking at that. And the fan base for Nebraska has been critical in the years of making this job, you know, a little less desirable because our expectations are so high and not to say we shouldn't have expectations of national championships but we got to roll it back to expectations of conference championships winning records now not just right. championships we got to have the expectations okay let's just start we got we start from the beginning basically so the fan base has to say to themselves okay let's take a seat let's take a seat back and let's 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 work on building blocks 
Let's get to a winning record. Let's get back to a bowl game. Okay. Right. We got to stop thinking about championships and being top five. That's years and years away right now. Right. We got to think about winning, winning games and get back to bowl games and building from there. So the fan blade base is on blast for me uh, because I'm, I, I'm, I get tired of every year in the spring of the fans being so excited and talking about all these kids. And one week into the season, they're killing these kids, right? Right. <laughs> one week into the season, they're killing these kids. So the fans got to understand, like, hey, y'all play a part in this too. Yeah, and I think that something has to be something has to be said about enter starting to enter seasons with more realistic expectations. And I do think yeah. that I, I do think that in a way that like us as media um, play a role in that. And, and have to be okay with saying, yeah, I think this is a seven and five team, just for example, right? Yeah, it's not, like, it doesn't fun. always have to be, oh yeah, I can see a path to nine wins. It doesn't have to be like that. And I think no. that that was something I think, I think coming into the season, I, I cannot remember for sure. I think I either predicted five or six wins. I can't remember which one it was. And I had a little heat for that, like it was a little bit, because I think people hear, so, like people get so angry at, you not saying that they have a path to winning the conference and winning the championship right when they hadn't been to a bowl game in at that point four years it'll be five now you know adding that last Riley year in there and so yeah I do think I, I agree with you on that point that you have to you have to start somewhere and you have to start to have realistic expectations heading into the season um regardless of like how difficult you think the schedule is or not like I think evaluating Nebraska for where they are meeting you sometimes you got to meet folks where they at right right now got to see where they are right now and going forward um to really evaluate it cannot be judged based on what they should have done in the past or anything like that um so I so I'm with you on that um now for me I'm gonna go with Aaron Rodgers now it is not necessarily 100% probably the reason that you think I'm gonna put Aaron Rodgers on blast um, yeah. Because I honestly, I, it's not, uh, I haven't been, trust me, y'all have been listening to me, hear my heart. It is not because 100% that he is refusing to get the jab. It's not just because of that. <laughs> it's the lying. It's the lying about it. Yeah. People lie about stuff when they know they do it wrong. He knew yeah. he was wrong when he stood up there and said, oh, yeah, I, what did he say? I'm inoculated. Or whatever he said, because he went and got his, he, he you know, words that, yeah, like he, he misled. Yeah, he used words that made you think, oh, he got the vaccine without right. saying he got the vaccine. And then when people when it, he when was it coached, was quick, yeah, when it was a quick follow up, he said, yeah, right. And so, so he knew he knew what he was doing. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And so, you know, and I get it, kind of why like like Packers media didn't press him on that. And that was a weird time, if you remember, when basically every time somebody did a press conference, they were being asked whether or not they got the vaccine or not. And I can understand. <laughs> Kyrie Irving still ain't got it. <laughs> yeah, Kyrie Irving still ain't got it. But the thing is, and it's funny because that's what I was doing next, the difference between Kyrie and Aaron Rodgers is Kyrie, even though people crushed him and they still talk about Kyrie yeah. dragging through but every day. The one thing I'll give Kyrie credit for is Kyrie got on that weird Instagram live where he had a little earring dangling and he said, <laughs> I'm not going to do it. This is me. I'm not going to do it. And he, and he said, it, it's just not for me. He gave his reasons and that's fine. I can disagree with this. Cool I can agree. But he did actually kind of man up and say, listen, this is what I'm going to do. Aaron Rodgers deciding to lie about it, then come on the back end and go on Pat McAfee's podcast and bring out every excuse and conspiracy theory in the book to then justify his decision and say that people were going to come after him. He knew. He knew that people were going to come after him, and it had nothing to do with, like, the woke mob or anything crazy like that. It was the fact that he lied about it. And you know how we also know that? Remember when um, – what's the man in, in Minnesota that's terrible? Kirk Cousins. When Kirk yeah. Cousins came out here and said that, he said the same thing during preseason. He wasn't going to do it, but what did he do right after that? He said, put me in plexiglass, separate me from the team in the meeting rooms. I'll yeah. do what I have to do, but I'm and not going to do it. that's what I'm going with. It. Yeah, if you uh, go, yeah, because if you're not going to do it, then you really Just let everybody know you ain't going to do yeah. it so they can handle, so they can do, yeah. do, do the right precautions. Right. So, and, and then you need to also just follow people. the precautions as well, yeah. right? 
Um, yeah, and so, and Carson Wentz, I think, is in a in a pretty similar situation too, um, in what he's decided to do. So, yeah, just don't mislead people. Um, and then, though, and then where he does have a similarity with Kyrie Irving is that both of those guys really think that they're the smartest guys in the world, and they have figured something yeah. out to be scientists and doctors that spend their entire lives studying this stuff. You went on YouTube, did your research, and figured out something that they didn't figure out. Like that just sound crazy when you say it out loud. So for yeah, all of those start, things, he has to when you start there. when you start when you start with the conspiracy theories, man, that's when you just need to stop talking. Like that's the stuff that you just need to say to your friends, <laughs> right? Private. Like that's why you're not doing it in public and to the media. Just be like, look, look, it, I just don't feel comfortable with it. Yeah, do do what a lot of people just, have honestly done. This say this is a personal decision. I don't feel comfortable. I'm making this de- decision for me. Yeah, and leave I don't it feel there. With it. Like yeah, just leave it there because for the I think for the most part. Because there's always, because there's so many things happening at once. I think for the most part, when people have said that they get left alone, um, yeah. it's when you take it to the extra levels is where people have really gotten issues. The reason that Kyrie has been talking about so much because he does those weird Instagram lives and he does all of this other stuff. And he's um, a little bit touched anyway. Yeah, yeah. And he's got some, yeah, there's just some weird stuff going on with him anyway. And so it, it's just been all crazy about how that's, that has gone with Aaron Rodgers. And that day was that, that was Friday, right? Where all of that stuff kind of came out. And it was just, man, have they nobody, finally, I, didn't, I didn't see the day if they decided to I haven't gonna, seen it. I they, they said they were supposed to you. Yeah. He's going to pay for the penny for that because I know they was, they were saying because he went to a bunch of events and didn't yeah, wear a mask. Yeah, he went to a Halloween party. And, but the thing all, is, is he was all around the facility. He went, he he went on the mask on. Yeah, but he admitted that on the podcast. He went on the podcast and was like, yeah, the only time that I don't wear my mask is when I'm in a room full of vaccinated people. So, like, you probably shouldn't just continue to explain, like, continue talking about all of these things just because you do know eventually, nothing. yeah, the league is going to come back around and get you. But the thing that I want to know on the back end of this, and I think this will end up being a problem, is how much about this did the Packers know, right? Because that's the thing that will also get them in trouble. Because remember, they were going through this contract battle with him, and then he wanted that, to be moved and all of that. Like that. I think if he got if he got something done outside of the facility, that they would have had made him bring some medical records to prove it, right? Well, he tried. Remember, he said that he tried and he presented his case to the NFL and they laughed at it. Because he yeah, but I mean, I mean, their own medical staff. Oh, okay, their that. medical staff. Okay, <laughs> like they they should have been like, okay, let me see what you let me see what what you had done. Yeah. Or if you were vaccinated, show me your card. Right. right? Yeah. Let us. And, and, and you know, they could have presented it that presented that as a yeah. Let us help you and be on your side and be an advocate yeah. for you because we are talking about their you know franchise player. They gonna want to be on his side here. Um. So yeah, that's true. <laughs> I mean, I just, you look at this and it's like one of those moments where you hope this doesn't divide a locker room too and cause problems that go on because they they was balling up until last night yeah they were like, yeah. <laughs> they was balling up until last night so you hope this isn't something like derails their progress just because somebody had felt like they needed to mislead people instead of just saying i didn't get shot it's not for me i'm gonna do i'm gonna i'm gonna take the risk uh, and, and if i get if i get it then they'll just have to find me a game check or whatever whatever the, the rule was but i'm not i'm still not getting the shot but I'll take all the precautions I need to do and I'll do everything I need to do instead of this is really some drama for no reason. Right. Right. <laughs> it's yeah. really that, that's really no basically reason. where we are. Um, and it will be fascinating to see how this ends up either derailing the Packers season. I, you know, some of these situations, people end up coming together, but that's going to be tough because it's already been a roller coaster with him and his contract and it's, and it's no. he's had his back on that and you kind of have to be one of the best quarterbacks in the league we'll see what happens with this um and really where, where it goes with Aaron from now uh you know that those sponsors are starting to uh come calling too uh, as you go along to State Farm did not which is kind of interesting being an insurance company but that's either here or there uh that's gonna do it for us this that's a whole week. other conversation yeah that's a whole other we do a whole podcast on that uh, that's gonna do it for us this week uh, subscribe to the podcast everywhere you listen to and rate us and leave us a five-star review if you leave four i'm inclined to think you're a hater and nobody wants that uh make sure that you're checking out the other podcasts on the hill varsity network the mind your own podcast varsity club the nebraska press post game show and the hill varsity radio show also check out the hill varsity youtube page you can find me on there with another recruiting question uh video of the week 
You can get after us on Twitter at Greg Smith HB and at Steve underscore Warren 96. You can also email the show at straight up breakdown at hailvarsity.com. I will catch y'all next week. A Huda Media Production.